talk about Blaze Carter. Yes, sir. You know, I'm Santonio Carter, Blaze Carter, co-founder of the King Carter Youth Foundation. And uh, I'm a God-fearing man, awesome father, awesome husband, awesome brother, awesome uncle, awesome classmate, just a totally awesome guy to know. And like my brother Big Sonny said, I, I usually don't talk about myself. I let my work speak for myself, and I learned this from my big brothers. However, sometimes we got to... We gotta, we gotta. It ain't even bragging. We just gotta bring awareness to situations at times, cause people could have awareness to that, but uh, be quiet and play dumb and be numb, and act crazy to uh, the work we putting in and the the greatness we instilling into these kids. But me and my wife foundation, we visit all the juvenile detention centers, foster homes, YMCA's, boys and girls clubs, uh, schools, your house. We meet them in the street. We meet them wherever they at. And help them search themselves from the root of their feet, the crown of their head, to understand that you are a king, you are a queen, and bring them back to their righteous mind state and lift them up from a dead to a living perpendicular. And uh, keep pushing it in them and, and letting them know that they are champions. You were born champions no matter what your tribulations, your situations, your trials are. You must overcome. Don't lean on emotions. Emotions will leave you motionless. So uh, just tighten up, man up, go through the storm. And go through the storm willingly, knowing it's the other side. A lot of people are scared of the process. They don't even want to start it because they know in the middle it's going to get real hot, real fiery. I ain't going to really have no money. I ain't going to have no, too many people by my side, so they'll back off. Now, go and go through that thing. And when you go through that thing, fire is a is a method of purification. That fire burn all the stuff that I'm supposed to be off. So go and go through that fire. When you, when you get to the other side, look to the left and to the right. And those who with you, supposed to be with you. Well, I, I, the, those words that you speak, I, I don't know if you read them out of out of the Bible, but they, they touch my spirit as if those were words from Scripture. No, sir. I get these words and these things like this from big brothers like you. My big brother who not off death row and about to be free soon, Corey Smith. Mm -hmm. Like that guy give me all of certain books to read, certain things. He just lead me in direction and I follow They say you can't be a follower, but if you find somebody worthy of following, mm -hmm. you follow because nobody... Under the sun was born a leader. You had to obtain some traits, some characteristics. You had to learn something. Mm -hmm. And the only way you learned was by following directions, following lead, following suit. So nobody under the sun was born a leader. We just got to find people worthy of being followed and following. Well, so sunny day, 305 degrees. He said something. That brought the fire alarm down. Say that. You know what I mean? Say so, that. So, bro, 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 bro. <laughs> you said that. Our brother Corey Smith from prison. Yes, sir. From prison. From prison. Let, let, let's say that, you know, from prison. Yes, sir. Call and pour into you and well, tell you. When my son what, was murdered February 20, 2016, I think I would have did something foolish when I even been here. I wouldn't have been able to be here with you. Well, I know I would have, mm -hmm. everyone for Corey. He sat me down. He told me, like, from a father, from a big uncle, a big homie, whatever you want to nickname, the position, the relationship we got. But he sat me down and told me and talked to me and made me stay still. So I salute my big brother for that. So, uh, so let let me get this because you know I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm kind of you know names I'm not for men. So are you talking about the Corey who they call the leader John Doe? Yeah, Corey post, Smith. Bubba. Yeah, yeah, they're supposed to be this killer. They're supposed to be this and that. We met to be this. One, a few years ago. I do so much work. Catherine Rundle said she wanted to do me a favor. She owed me a favor. She said I need to do something for you. I said okay. Um. Let my big homie out. She said, who? I said, Corey Smith. She said, oh, you know him? He's a murderer. Mm -hmm. He's a murderer. Mm -hmm. She said, do you know he was a murderer? I say, according to reports and what people say, but I only know one guy he killed. Mm -hmm. And she said, who? I say, me. Mm. Break that down. It was ways I was, he killed ways I was eating. Things I was thinking, people I was walking around with, people I was conversating with, people I was so-called gang gang with. He got in my mind and he killed all that. He murdered me. Mm. And when he murdered me, the next day I woke up fully alive, fully rejuvenated, spirit feeling like nothing clinging, nothing attached, nothing holding me down from him murdering me. He resurrected me. He got me to a living perpendicular like a pyramid under, this, under the sun right now. Nothing could break me down. I'm going to keep shining through years, years, generations to come through him. And when I say, yeah, he murdered me, he killed me. I said, if he ain't killed me, you wouldn't like me. Mm. And she couldn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. She just said, oh, we're going to talk to you. Mm -hmm. We couldn't say nothing else. I'm a guy he killed. 
I'm a guy he murdered. So he just murdered me too because because you just you just paid it forward. And what I am doing, how he murdered me, I'm just going around murdering kids. So you a murderer. I'm a murderer. So a righteous murderer. So when the number one murderer come out, and he's gonna come out. He's coming out. He's gonna be right here on sunny days, 305 degrees, and we gonna it's all it's gonna be about murder, murder, murder. Yes, sir. Murder, murder. Right? Murder, murder. So lastly. This morning I came to this fine facility. Yes, sir. At the Dorothy Bendross Mendegal Social and Economic Institute. And I seen you, since you say you a murderer. Yes, sir. I seen you standing in front of how many children? At least 120 of them. Murdering them. Yeah, so he you was so I seen you standing in front of 120 children, murdering them to life. Yeah. Murdering them to life. And also, there was a little brother that you was really, you know, basing a, a little story behind. Yeah, I was about to hurt him. I was yeah. really about to hurt him. Yeah, let, let's talk about that. A little guy in the program last week, you know, he he done been around in the system. He got four cases through Florida, only 15. Mm -hmm. So he, my wife was conducting the class, getting everybody to come back in the classroom, and he felt that he was going through something already. Yes. So he channeled his whole anger out to my wife and ran up on that. And he a little, he got a little, little stockiness yeah, to him. Yeah, I seen he's stocky ran, now. Yeah, he ran up on my wife as he was going to do something to her. Mm -hmm. So I, I lost my damn mind, big bro. Rightfully so. I lost my damn mind, big bro. I could have lost my job, lost my freedom. Mm -hmm. And at that point, in that moment, I didn't even care. Because I'm going to protect my queen, protect my wife by any means necessary, by all calls. Like, yes, sir. By any, you know? Yes, sir. So... When I stepped to him, I was so angry I had done. I was talking to him, and before I didn't want to touch him, so we got there, I simply told him, don't bring your ass back to this camp. Stay your ass home. Mm -hmm. And simply said it out my mouth, fuck you, stay home. Yes. Yes, sir. And then I got home, and as I'm sitting on my bed, I thought about a knock that I got on my door after my son was murdered. It's a dude came and knocked on my door and say sorry, and I'm like, why this dude telling me he's sorry? He like, I had those kids in my program prior to your kid getting killed. I just had them in my program. And they showed out so bad, was bringing weapons to the camp, and I kicked their ass out the camp mm -hmm. just a few days ago. Yes, sir. And when I kicked them out the camp, I see they ain't had nothing to do but indulge into beef on Facebook, mm -hmm. and it lead to your son dying. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry. So me sitting on my bed, I thought about it. I just told a 15-year-old kid, the same age as the kid who killed my son. Mm. I just told him, stay your ass home, fuck you. The same words he used. Yes, sir. I'm sitting on my bed like, nah, nah. So I called him.